wow, Israel Adesanya loses to Alex Pereira. I think the world is in a state of shock right now. But before we go any further, please, 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 please subscribe to the podcast from wherever you get your podcasts from. And if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the, uh, the bell icon so you never miss a future episode. So yeah, Israel's lost to Alex. The belts have changed hands. Um, I think for most people, it's fair to say that this was a shock. Uh, I think before we go any further, we need to give massive respect to both fighters for putting on an incredible performance. Both of them. What a fight. What a co-main event. I think it's kind of drumming home why the UFC is kicking boxing's ass right now. I don't think there's any dispute the UFC is without a shadow of a doubt the biggest combat uh, promotion in the world. You know, we've seen all the problems with AJ and Fury. We had all the problems with the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight being made far too late. We've got so much politics getting in the way of making great fights in boxing right now. I'll do a completely different episode in the future about the state of boxing, but I think it's pretty clear to see the UFC is, is making fights that everyone wants to see. You've got Israel in his prime kicking ass his champion. You've got Alex coming up as a, as a pretender to the throne with a load of heat coming up behind him. And we get these two guys together and they put on one hell of a show. So I think the UFC, the UFC will take a huge amount of prop for that. Um, and yeah, it was a spectacle. Um, I think we need to first of all give respect to uh, uh, Israel for his reign and for what he's done for the middleweight division he's definitely taken it to new heights you know he's a tall languid guy usually someone of his size you think of john jones they are light heavy or even full-blown heavyweight because they're so big um, but a little bit like thomas hearns in boxing when he first started and there was nothing of him you know israel's really tall and rangy and languid uh he can strike he can tie you up he can grapple and he has the reach advantage 90% of the time. But he has changed the mold of a middleweight fighter in the UFC. There's no two ways about it. Instead of being shorter and stockier, he's massive. There's no way of getting around that. And he's had an incredible run. He's done incredible things for promoting diversity and the international interest of the UFC. And he's been a fantastic champion. He will come again. And for anyone who doesn't know anything about Pereira, this guy, he's no slouch. Massive experience when it comes to combat sports. Uh, he's been in kickboxing for 12, 13 years. Major success in, I think it's the glory promotion. Uh, this guy can strike. And when he strikes, you stay hit. He will put you to sleep. If you want to see a tough SOB, you want to see a bad motherfucker. This guy ticks those boxes. If there's a definition of those in the dictionary, it's Alex Pereira. Um, I think if I remember correctly, he signed with the UFC in 2021. And he's had now four fights with the UFC. Four fights and he's champion. I think I'd have to check. I think that might be a record. His mixed martial arts career is he's now had eight fights, seven wins, one loss. So he is, as I said, a tough motherfucker. That one loss was his first fight. So he had his first mixed martial arts fight, a little bit green, a little bit inexperienced, loses, and he hasn't lost since. Um, it takes a bad man to beat Israel. And the only, the only recent defeat he had was when he went up to light heavy. So I think that puts a lot of respect on Pereira's name. Now, apart from being an amazing fight, this shows something for anyone who has never really been in, a participant in combat sports or maybe hasn't played high-level sport in any, any realm. I think this kind of shows the importance of mentality, of the psychological aspect of sport. Whenever it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's boxing or MMA or even something like tennis, uh, the power of the mind being a muscle, I think, has now been put into full focus. Anyone who's got like a varied interest in sports like myself, they'll remember Senna and Prost in F1. 
they'll remember Federer and Nadal in tennis. Um, and even recently, we've seen Joshua and Usyk. When someone is in your mind, when someone has your number, it creates a mental block. It is very difficult to overcome. And for anyone who didn't know, Israel and Alex had locked horns twice in their kickboxing careers. And Alex Pereira had beaten Israel twice. So both times, he was 2-0. I think the first fight, if I remember correctly, was on, was on points. And if I remember, if I remember correctly, I think he, I think it was a left hook that put him on the canvas and knocked him out in the second fight. That is a difficult mental obstacle to overcome. So going into this fight, you know, Israel is having to not only beat someone as big as him, which is unusual in the middleweight division, he's having to overcome that mental barrier of having to beat someone who has had your number twice. Now. I've got the fight here just so we can see. It's really, really interesting. Start the, the starting tactics in the very first round. We can see here, look, Pereira goes straight in and lands a kick. Straight away, he lands that kick. So let's let's bring that back. Let's go right back. Round one, straight away. In they come, center of the octagon. Bang, straight away. Now. That's a really interesting tactic because immediately you're showing the champion, I'm not scared of you. Fuck you, I'm taking those belts. That is a big marker to lay down, especially someone like Israel. What it also did for the rest of the fight, set a precedent. For the remainder of the fight, you had Pereira stalking his prey. Pereira was the one who was looking to apply pressure. He was the aggressor. And you had Israel fighting off the back foot, counter-punching, counter-kicking, reacting rather than being the aggressor and what was really interesting was <clears throat> when the distances were close it was Pereira who looked the better fighter he was able to lock up he was able to nullify some of the strikes from Israel he landed some shots to the chin he did an awful lot of kicks at the start of the fight both of them were looking to kick just suss each other out both of them managed to, to land to the body they both held sort of middle height guards, elbows just above waist height. And they were both able to get their shins in, getting into that midriff area, looking to take the legs out from one another. It was a really, really interesting fight because Israel was the one backing away, going to the side of the octagon. You had Pereira stalking his prey, putting the pressure on. At the end of the first round, um, again, coming forward, he got caught with a, with a great counter by, by Israel and... I think fights, sometimes you have those sliding door moments where, you know, you shoulda, woulda, coulda. Had Israel landed a telling shot in that first round 10 seconds sooner, fight might have been done in the first round. Right at the end of the round, and we can go to it now, he lands an absolutely outstanding shot. And Pereira was, was there for the taking. He was basically out on his feet. Didn't know where he was. Groggy, legs had gone, one more shot, and uh, and he was there. So they're locking up now, as we can see. And in these exchanges, Israel looked the better grappler. He was locking him up, nullifying anything that Pereira was trying to do. And then as they break now, Israel catches him. Three, two, one, bang. There, that right hand, that left to the chin. And he was ready to go, and he was saved by the bell. Now, you walk away all cocky, but if this had happened 10 seconds sooner, fight is over. And a dangerous fighter, somebody who is tough, like I said before, get into their corner, get their team around them, give them a chance to recover. In the second round, the third round, the fourth round, he had a second wind, and he didn't really put himself in that position again. And what we found for the rest of the fight was as I said, when the distances were close, it was Pereira who looked the better fighter. When there was a bit more distance, when you could get away with some ranger strikes, Israel looked like he had his number. When they grappled, when we had some mat work, Israel looked like he was, a, was applying more pressure. He was able to nullify some potential takedowns. He was the one who was able to get on top, work the back, 
lock him with his legs. If anyone was going to sub submit the other guy, it looked like it was going to be Israel. So if you're talking about the all-round fighter, I'd say that Israel looked the better fighter. Because of how he stunned Alex Pereira in the first round, you would give Israel the first, the first round. And as it went on to the mat, as it became technical, as it became less just about striking, Israel looked like he was he was winning the fight. Now, depending on your point of view, was it a shutout? Was it three rounds to one going into the last? That depends on your point of view. What was almost frightening was going back to the long range kicking, which Israel had some success with. Israel tried to uh, hit a long range kick and Alex was able just to move his body, shift his weight, was able to defend it, saw it coming, started to read what Israel was going to do and defended it with his left leg. And the weight of impact from the kick from leg to leg, I don't think I've anything, ever seen anything like it. It changed the momentum of the fight. It changed it so that Israel went flying back to the side of the cage. I don't think I've ever seen anyone fall on their backside and do a backwards roly-poly just because of the force of being deflected from attempting a kick. And that just shows how strong Alex Pereira is. Now, I don't know what they feed guys down in Brazil. Um, obviously, BJJ was developed there through the Gracies. Maybe he's had something, some kind of word with Wolverine. Maybe he's got adamantium going through his body. But I've never seen anyone kick someone and just be repelled by the block like that. So bad that he went backwards and went over his ass on the mat and went flying back to the side of the cage. It was... If you haven't seen it, go on YouTube, have a look on it. He literally, with his right with his right shin, looks to, from long range, get a kick in. And it's just a block. It's just a clever block, shift of weight uh, by Alex Pereira. Read it, saw it coming, and bang. It's, it's the force of that block which sends Israel back. Now, as I said, for those, those middle rounds, Israel looked like he had Alex's number. It looked like Alex was probably the stronger of the two. It looked like if it was just going to be a striking contest that Alex probably was going to win, um, which is similar to the second fight that they had in their kickboxing careers. But in terms of all-round skill set, you can see that Israel has been in the game that little bit longer. He's picked up... Um, skills from his previous fights and he was able to nullify a lot of what Alex did he was able to keep it at range or he was able to instigate takedowns if they were on the mat or they were grappling on the side of the cage he looked like he probably had a bit more control um, a bit more assertive he could be aggressive he could be uh, defensive it looked like he had Alex's number then when we get towards uh, a minute or so into the fifth round this is as a result of already the momentum changing. And this is where Alex is stalking his prey again. And as we can see, Israel's looking to clinch. If we bring it forward a little bit here, as they peat each other. He hits him here with a couple of shots. And for the first time in the fight, he's in trouble. The champion's in trouble. Now, the, the referee steps in there. I think it's a quick stoppage. I don't think you could argue that uh, Israel was unable to defend himself. He got caught with a couple of good shots there. Uh, some lefts and rights. But I wouldn't say that he was unable to defend himself. He didn't. Ha it's not like he was there, stunned, his legs had gone. It didn't look like he'd lost his bearings. And as soon as the referee stepped in, the camera shot doesn't show it. But he's already protesting with the referee, saying, whoa, what's going on here? I think... I think the referee was a little bit concerned. It was a bloody fight. It was a grueling fight. It was a war. You can hear in between the rounds, the corners are saying to each other, this is a war. The commentators, you can hear Joe Rogan saying, oh my God, this is a war. This is what we want to see. And it almost looked like the referee was looking for an excuse to step in. Now, of course, they have to protect the safety and the welfare of the fighters, of course. But this is a championship fight. This is the champion. A champion goes out on his shield. And I'm of the opinion that the challenger needs to wrestle the belt away from the champion. That's not to say that the champion already has a point advantage or a round advantage. That's not right. But you are a champion for a reason. And if you relinquish that belt 
If that belt is taken away from you, if you lose the fight, it needs to be wrestled from you. And I don't think that happened. I think Pereira landed some powerful shots. And Israel was stunned. Just like Israel had stunned Alex in the first round. Now, there were a couple of shots that went in there. He bowed his head. He cowered away. He was at the side of the cage. But I don't think he was... He, was, he wasn't motionless. He wasn't senseless. He knew where he was. His legs hadn't gone. And I think it was a premature stoppage. And I think that took away from the fight. He should have been allowed to potentially continue. And if at that stage he was in trouble, the referee could jump in and stop it. So I think from the moment he tried uh, that leg kick and it was repelled and he went on his ass, uh, the momentum of that round had completely changed. But he hasn't lost the fight yet. He hasn't lost the round yet. He's still moving around. He still had his movement. It didn't look like he'd broken his shin or anything like that. He was still bouncing around, but Alex Alex smelt blood and went in for the kill a few times. Landed a couple of shots, as we saw. Israel went for a couple of clinches, tried to lock up. They separated again. They tried to jab each other with some kicks and some punches. And then as they got in close, as I said earlier, when the distance was short, it looked like Alex had the, the measure of Israel. Landed a couple of shots, and for the first time in the fight, the champion's in trouble, and I don't think the fight should have been stopped. And I think it was a bit of a... It's a premature end to what was an amazing title fight. Um, and I think the UFC can be proud of what they've put on. Proud of both fighters. We hope that we get the rematch pretty damn soon. Um, if you watch the post-fight press conference, I think it was very, very little between the fighters. And I think both fighters realised that. Uh, I think the stoppage was early. We could have potentially gone to the very, very last seconds of the fight. As we saw, one instance changed the momentum of that round. Who's to say that Israel wouldn't have landed something and the momentum changed again? Who's to say he wouldn't have tried a, a single leg or a double leg takedown, get it on the mat where he looked like he was in the ascendancy? Um, we don't know. Um, would Alex have potentially finished him off with another flurry of punches? We don't know. And that's the problem with it being a slightly premature a stoppage by the referee but all in all what an amazing fight I think both guys showed why they are top dogs in the middleweight division um, all I can say is respect to both um, Israel will come again um, amazing achievement when you think about it that this was just Alex Pereira's fourth fight in the UFC and he's got he's got the middleweight championship from from Israel nonetheless um, it's also really interesting if we go back a year or so we had this Nigerian invasion we had Usman who had the title he's been knocked out by Edwards we had Israel he had the title he's just been knocked out by Pereira we had Anthony Joshua Nigerian heritage in boxing he's just lost twice to Usyk so there's been a bit of a shift here and it's set up for the Nigerians to come again and try and take their titles back um but yeah, I just wanted to say absolutely massive respect to both fighters. What an amazing fight it was. Bit of a premature stoppage. It's set up perfectly for a rematch. And as Alex Pereira said, it, uh, or showing in the octagon, 3-0. 3-0. So it's now set up for Israel to try and come again and show that in the UFC, he's got enough skills in his arsenal to come back and uh, get those belt well they get that belt back um let me know in the comments what you guys thought but i just thought it was amazing um well done to the ufc hope we get the rematch soon uh i will catch you guys very very soon please don't forget to like and subscribe um and yes i will catch you all very very soon